School. It's me, Ms. McNichol. Welcome to episode number five of Goodnight Jog School. I'm filming in my kitchen today because this is where I got the idea for today's episode. This episode is all about spoons. I thought of this idea and I said, I wonder how many different kinds of spoons I can find in my kitchen. I'll show you what I collected a little bit later in the episode. But first, I'm going to share with you a book that I used to read to my children. It's called, And the Dish Ran Away with the Spoon. You might recognize the title from the nursery rhyme, Hey Diddle Diddle, The Cat and the Fiddle. Let's find out what happens after the dish ran away with the spoon.
Here he is, yelled Cat. He's under this haystack, fast asleep. Wake up, lazy little boy, barked Dog. Shh, he looks so peaceful, whispered Cow. I think I'll hit the hay, too. There's no time for a nap, warned Cat. Search this haystack. Oh, 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 choo, Dog sneezed. The haystack was gone. Well, no dish and spoon in there, said Cow. Little boy Boop Blue rubbed his eyes. Hey, where'd my haystack go? Sorry, dog has hay fever, Cat replied. We're in a pickle. Dish and spoon ran away and our rhyme can't be read without them. Can you help us? That's nothing to sneeze at, little boy stretched. But... I've been asleep. I can't even find my cows and sheep. And where's that horn? We're barking up the wrong tree, Dog grumbled. Let's go north to Little Miss Muffet. With a curd and a whey and a dickery day, they set out for Miss Muffet's place. The cat with the fiddle, the cow who could jump, and the dog with the scowl on her face. A big creepy spider sat on a tuffet. May I help you? We're in a mess, said Cat. Dish and Spoon ran away. Yeah, Sputter interrupted. I have the same problem with Muffet. I try to be nice, get to know her, even sit down beside her and then, pfft, gone every time. But Muffet always comes back, right? said Cow. This time, Dish and Spoon didn't come back. Are they here? The only dishes here are the dirty ones in the sink. Were your friends clean or dirty? Spider asked. They were clean when they left, Dog said, but who knows what they look like now. Cat rummaged through the sink. I don't see them. Now what? Spider grinned. Why don't you try Wolf's house? It's about a mile east of here. You mean the b -b big b bad wolf, said Cow. He's not big and bad all the time, said Spider. Why, Wolf is very kind to strangers. I bet he's having some for lunch right now. With a huff. And a puff and a little de duff by the hair of their chinny chin chins. The cow and the dog and the cat traveled east to where the dark forest begins. No bones about it, whispered dog. It's dark in this neck of the woods. Cow stopped. Why don't you two just go ahead? I'll wait right here. Don't be a chicken, said Cat. I'm not a chicken, I'm a cow. Then get a move on, Cat ordered. They crept deeper and deeper into the forest. Look, whispered Cat. There's Wolf's house. I'm looking, Cow stammered. It looks pretty big and bad to me. Dog marched ahead. Come on, I bet his bark is worse than his bite. Wolf opened the door. Hello, my little morsels. Come in and join me for lunch. We're in a predicament, said Cat, bravely. Dish and spoon ran away, and our rhyme can't be read without them. Can you help us? Of course I can, Wolf licked his chops. But you three look so tired. I have a nice tub of hot, warm bubbling. 
over there, hot water bubbling over there. First, I can rub a dub dub you down with a little se seasoning. Uh, I mean, bath oil. Then Dog spotted it on the floor, a tiny chip of flowered china. Our friends, she gasped. What have you done with our friends? Wolf grabbed her. Come on, you dirty dog. It's time to get in the tub. I'm just in the mood for a tasty dog treat. I'm not tasty, pleaded dog. I'm grumpy and tough. Wolf held dog over the pot of boiling water. Then you'll taste just like my mama's cooking. Cow screamed. Let that little dog go. But of course I'll let her go. Right into the pot, Wolf laughed. <laughs> Just then, Cat had an idea. He put his fiddle under his chin and began to play a soft and tender lullaby. Wolf stopped. He turned his head. My mama, my mama, she used to sing that song to me every night before I went to sleep. Wolf cradled dog in his arms and crooned, Rock. Goodbye, Wolfie, in your big bed. Wolf lay down on the floor, his big eyes closed, and his big ears flopped. The big bad wolf was fast asleep. Dog wriggled free. They all tiptoed past Wolf and then bolted out the door and down the path. Whew! Cow sighed. That was a close shave. We're not out of the woods yet, panted Dog. Suddenly, a voice boomed in the distance. Fee, fi, fo, fish. I smell the blood of a spoon and dish. Cat, dog, and cow froze. The voice is coming from the east, said Cow. It sounds like the giant, cried Dog. Dish and spoon. Must be at the beanstalk. Cat grabbed the map from Cow. Oh, no. The beanstalk. Look how far away it is. I can help. Hop on. I'll get us there in a flash. With a fee and a fum and a twiddle-dee-dum, the cow jumped high in the air. Over the forest and meadows they flew, and lickety-split, they were there. Cat, cow, and dog landed at the foot of the beanstalk. Help! came a cry from above. Last, they had found dish and spoon. Cat rushed over. Spoon, spoon, are you all right? I, I think so, said Spoon. But, but, where's Dish? She's over here, said Cow. And she's over here, said Dog. And she's over here too, said Cat. Oh, no cried Spoon. She's everywhere. As they picked up the broken pieces, Spoon sobbed. Wolf chased us up the beanstalk. Then Giant chased us down the beanstalk. And we slipped. We didn't mean to run away. Each time our rhyme was read, we went a little farther and a little farther. This time we went too far and got lost. It was scary. Look! Dish is trying to say something, said Cow. Quick, put her mouthpieces together. I want to go home, whispered Dish. With Dish in a sack, they all headed back, and hardly a sentence was spoken. The cat, the dog, the cow, and the spoon, their friend and their hearts were broken.
now what are we going to do? Cat moaned as they traveled south toward home. This is really the end. The final curtain dishes nothing but a pile of chips. Our rhyme is over forever. Dog stopped in her tracks. Look, Humpty's wall. He fell, falls apart every day. Somebody has to put him back together. Let's find out who. They raced toward the wall. Dog spotted a sign on a nearby tree. Jack's Repair Shop. You blew it, I glue it. Inside Jack's shop, the floor was covered with eggshells, broken beds and chairs, snipped off noses and sticks and straw. What's the problem? asked Jack, gluing a tail on a mouse. Dish went to pieces. Our rhyme has fallen apart. Can you help us, cat asked sadly. I am Jack of all trades, and I'm nimble and quick, too. Jack took the sack. But this looks really bad, bad, really bad. I'll see what I can do. They paced up and down with a fiddle de frown, spoon little dog and cow. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't help anyone now. At last Jack returned, and Dish was right behind him. It was tough, but I stuck with it. See, Dish is as good as new, said Jack. Well, except for the missing piece. You mean this piece? said Dog, holding out the chip of flowered china. You found it, cried Dish. It chipped off when I was running from Wolf. I crashed into that big pot. Jack glued the chip in place. Hooray! Dish is back together, and so are we. Everyone cheered as they rushed outside. Dish smiled at Dog. I'm a full plate, thanks to you. When the drips are down, you can count on me. Dog chuckled. Hey, guys, did you hear that? I cracked a joke. Dish began to laugh, and then Spoon, then Cow, then Cat, and then Dog threw her head back and laughed louder than anyone else. Who would have believed it, said Cow. Dog really laughed. And Cat played the fiddle and saved us from Wolf, added Dog. And Cow got us to the beanstalk by jumping higher than ever, said Cat. Speaking of jumping, we'd better go. It's almost time. And in the winking and blinking of an eye, they were back home. Quick, places everyone, yelled Cat. Hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. The little dog laughed to see such sport, and the dish stayed at home with the spoon. The end. Some spoons are big, some spoons are small. These spoons can measure anything at all. Spoons of wood and spoons of metal, spoons to scoop or stir in a kettle. Some spoons are old, some spoons are new. One is orange and one is blue. Spoons are dull or spoons can shine. So many spoons and they all are mine. Good night, Jarlick School. Late in the evening on Hosmer Street, where all the cool kids have been tapping a beat. They lay in their beds, not one of them a fool, when we all say good night to Jarlick School. We go to class and learn something new. We chat with our friends and our teachers, too. We share our school spirit. We share what we know. Then just after three o'clock, it's time to go. In Jarlick School, at the end of the day, when all of the students have gone home to play, we close all the windows and put down our tools as we say good night to Jowick School. Good night to the teachers, good night to the halls, good night to the artwork hanging on the walls, 
Good night to the books and the principals, too. Good night to JJ, dressed all in blue. Good night to the gym where we climb and run. Good night to the playscape where we have fun. Good night to the numbers. Good night to the words. Good night to all of the stories we've heard. In Jollick School, at the end of the day, when all of the students have gone home to play, we close all the windows and put down our tools as we say good night to Jowick School. Good night, Jowick School. See you tomorrow.